What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 197 and we start today's episode off by seeing that Villarreal have accepted a bid for Daniel Illaramendi of £7 million plus ferry. Now this guy does look pretty decent, 21 years old, 78 overall but I do know that it's probably a bit of an overspend for the guy but as I mentioned before when you do put bids in for these young players and when I put in bids for these young players you've got to remember nowadays you've got to spend a little bit more money and when you do so you've got to keep in mind too those players will probably be worth more than that in the future if they develop as well as you would hope them. They hope they will. Illarimendi has the exciting prospect tag on the guy, so we offer the guy a contract, he rejects the first one, we offer him a new one, and we'll wait and see what he says. And also, Lazzarini does accept his contract as well, so we're going to sign the guy for £7.25 million, pounds, plus Mauricio Tevez, one of those fringe players who we didn't really need and was on relatively high wages. So, in comes Lazzarini, pretty pleased with that, to be honest. And again, worth mentioning, you know, it probably is an overspend right now, but I'm sure in the future he'll be worth more than what we've already paid for the guy so yeah he looks okay to be honest nothing too special nothing too stand out but I was pretty disappointed to find out he doesn't actually have a skull cap in the game which is a real shame I mentioned over the past couple episodes that one of the reasons I was going in for this guy is because he's got a skull cap in his player picture for his player profile sadly in the game he doesn't wear it which is a real shame maybe it's just something he wears before the games a pre-game ritual I don't know but um, even so he also signed a youth scout as well five star experience and judgment um, as I mentioned before I was always going to stick to my word as as soon as one became available I would sign one. Uh, it cost almost uh, eight million pounds, so yeah, in he comes, and it still gives us quite a bit of money to, uh, left over to buy a couple more players if we'd like to do so. But yeah, in comes the youth scout, and as soon as the summer transfer window ends, we'll send them out on a mission, and we'll start to scout for some players. Anyway, we take on Lech Poznan for the first game of today's episode here, and of course, as the Polish side come and takes on the Emirates, we beat them away from home by a goal to nil, thanks to a Danny Welbeck penalty. So of course, coming into this game, they would have to score a goal if they were going to cause is a bit of a surprise and knock us out of the Champions League in the qualifier but the first chance would fall to us in a 35th minute as Latans Regen finds a Stina down his right hand side he crossed the ball in towards Odu Bajo and it's a superb save by the goalkeeper as he keeps it nil nil so Odu Bajo looking for his first goal for the club good save though and it was still goalless and in the 45th minute on the stroke of half time we play out from the back as Ince finds Proctor who finds a Stina a Stina finds Atta here as Latans Regen fake shot roulette down the right hand side towards a Stina we keep holding the ball as he cuts inside ends up playing the ball through towards Latam's regen. The defender loses the ball. Atta takes it around him with a quick little fake shot. He lunges in needlessly and the referee awards a penalty. So penalty to Arsenal here and also a side note as well. Coming into this game I noticed beforehand I think we played seven or possibly even eight new gen slash regens with this Arsenal team. So that's kind of cool isn't it? But even so it was Latam's regen who won us the penalty there as he got taken down. He's only got three star skill moves as I showed you guys in the last episode which is actually a bit disappointing but even so nice little fake shot. He got taken down and I've got no doubt in my mind that was a definite penalty. So penalty to us on a stroke of half time. Odu Bajo, uh, possibly the foes regen, stands up to take this penalty and he does score as well. So we scored a penalty against Poznan in the first leg. We score one in the second leg as well. And it's now Arsenal 1, uh, sorry, Arsenal 1, Poznan 0 on the night and Arsenal 2, Poznan 0 on aggregate. So 1-0 to Arsenal. Odu Bajo, his first goal for the club. The chances this guy will get will probably be limited in this Arsenal team, but at 21 years old, 77 overall, he's clearly got a bright future, so for him to score in his first start for the club was very nice to see indeed. So, Poznan must be pretty disappointed though, you know, to play us for the second time and to concede two penalties in these two games must have been really frustrating for them, because they were certainly in the first leg, they were playing pretty well, just we uh, snuck away with a 1-0 uh, victory thanks to the penalty, so coming to this game, you'd think they're trying to eradicate those mistakes with the silly challenges, but clearly not. In a 65th minute though they tried to get themselves back into this tie as they crossed the ball in and eventually it's flipped down and the shot really should have found the back of the net or at least hit the target but it did go wide and behind for a goal kick and in the 84th minute as the score was still 1-0 Poznan were pretty much out of the game they had to score two goals in six minutes which I couldn't see them doing and as Estina came forward here he had a great chance to make it 2-0 on the night and 3-0 on aggregate but the goalkeeper made a very good save and Poznan cleared the ball away and one of the final chances fell here in the 88th minute as it's uh, flicked back towards Jordan Proctor down this right hand side really good chance chance here as he beats his man, gets himself into the area with a quick little step over, the shot is saved, it comes to Amrabat and he makes it Arsenal 2, Poznan 0, so Amrabat makes it 2-0, this guy playing for his future here at the club, I don't think he really has much of one as he's a pretty low overall and he hasn't really showed any signs that he's going to be you know, worth anything in the future really for this kind of club so Amrabat is probably not going to play too many more games here and this could possibly be his last game, you never know, but he did make it 2-0 though, the game was pretty much over anyway, we weren't going to lose the game, we weren't going 
going to go out. So we win the game by two goals to nil, three nil on aggregate, and of course that does put us through to the Champions League group stages. So very very pleased with that. You know, failing to get through to the group stages would have been absolutely disastrous, and you know, could have probably seen us lose our job. But no, we're through to the group stages. We win the uh, qualifier. Very very pleased with that. And there you go. Uh, also we make another signing. Ila Romendi is going to come in and join us for seven million pounds plus ferry. Again, worth mentioning that it is an overspend. I'm not going to deny that. But 21 years old, 78 overall. He's uh, already got some pretty decent stats and he's got the exciting prospect uh, tag on him, which means his potential should be anywhere between 85 to 89. So yeah, in comes Ila Romendi and I think he's going to be a pretty decent Spanish midfielder for us here at Arsenal. I really do think he'll be a very decent midfielder for us. How many games he'll play, I'm not too sure, but he does look pretty decent and one of those players for the future that we'd love to keep in our team. Uh, we also requested some funds from the board as well. For We asked for £4 million and they give us £4 million, which is great. And because we qualify for the group's stage of the Champions League we also got 1.3 million pounds so a healthy injection of 5 million there which is very nice to see and as you can see as well we also got a transfer for Szczesny as well now the Polish goalkeeper is wanted by Atletico Madrid for 18 million pounds Szczesny is 85 overall at 30 years old he's pretty decent but he does make quite a few mistakes we are for 32.5 million pounds and we'll wait and see what Atletico Madrid will say I'm not against selling Szczesny I wouldn't mind getting the money for the guy but the problem is I'm not sure whether we could find a goalkeeper who's you know much better or significantly better than Chesney anyway because Chesney's not bad I don't mind Chesney I do like to keep some players here uh, that were original Arsenal players and original players for a team that I joined um, you know midway through a career but even so I'm not I haven't really been too convinced by Chesney since we've came in you know he does make a few mistakes here and there. I know all, all goalkeepers will make mistakes but even so we'll have to wait and see what Flanagan Madrid say and there you go uh, so we take on Burnley for the second game of today's episode here is Burnley come and take us on at the Emirates for the third Premier League game of the season and our first home game of the season as well in the Premier League of course we beat Chelsea away on the opening day we then lost to our former club West Bromwich Albion on the second game of the season and coming into this game here against Burnley I've definitely fancied my chances the first chance fell here with uh, Niang's header being well saved by the goalkeeper but in the 15th minute as we cross the ball in again and Bayern Niang does get his first goal in an Arsenal shirt and makes it 1-0 to the Gunners so Arsenal won Burnley 0 Niang with his first goal for the club very pleased with that. He didn't score against Chelsea. He didn't score against West Bromwich Albion, but he looked pretty lively in both games. And I knew it was only going to be a matter of time before he would score for us. And as he heads this one in, nice little diving header. The goalkeeper can't deny him, and it's Arsenal 1, Burnley 0. So we do take the lead in this game. Niang getting his first goal for the club. It certainly wasn't spectacular or anything too eccentric, but it was a pretty decent header, and the goalkeeper had no chance. So Arsenal 1, Burnley 0. We take the lead through and by Niang's first goal for the club. And nine minutes later, we come through again with Mesut Ozil playing a great ball through towards Rodrigo Lazari. He goes through one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper and this guy has got such a cool finish on him. Rodrigo Lazari makes an Arsenal 2 Burnley nil, and Burnley were always going to struggle coming to this game. We knew that we were probably going to be the well we were the favourites right from the beginning but we knew we'd probably step up right from kickoff. and you know to be tuning up 25 minutes in it was going to be a long afternoon for Burnley as things stood. Very nice finish by Rodrigo Lazari there just cushioning the ball into the bottom corner with that left foot and it's Arsenal 2 Burnley nil. so I'm looking forward to seeing how Lazari and Yang will play to together this season that's now four goals between them Lazari's of course got three and that was a really really nice finish so Arsenal 2 Burnley nil. and in the 39th minute Kieran Gibbs beats O'Neill down left hand side and crosses the ball in and Mbai Niang has a free header and scores for the second time in this game so Niang scores another header and makes it Arsenal 3 Burnley nil. five minutes before the break going into the half time mark so 3-0 to Arsenal Niang with his second goal of the game and his second goal for the club really nice header but again just like the uh, the third well just like all goals really that would score the the marking was really, really poor. It was just quite routine, to be honest. So Arsenal 3, Burnley 0. And on the stroke of half-time, Azil's on the ball for us. Really good chance to make it 4-0. He finds Aaron Ramsey. Ramsey slides it through towards Mbanyang. Brilliant chance for 4-0. And he gets his hat-trick as well. So a first half hat-trick for Mbanyang. He hadn't scored in the first two league games, but he scores three here in 45 minutes. And it's Arsenal 4, Burnley 0. So Niang and Lazari, you know, now they've got six goals between them in three games. You know, I, I, just, I really believe these two are going to work really 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 well as a strike partnership because they're both capable of scoring several goals a season so Arsenal 4 Burnley nil was the score at half time and in the second half to be honest not much really happened until Graham Dorans went close hitting the woodwork here in the 73rd minute and eventually it was cleared away so a good chance there for Burnley to grab themselves a consolation goal if nothing else but it really was only going to be that because to be honest they didn't really do anything in the game they were very very poor and as Niang runs through here from the um 
well, from the uh, the passes forward after he got the ball away from Burnley's chance. Nian goes through one on one. Hilda Hill flicks around the goalkeeper and ends up putting the ball into the empty net. So Arsenal five, Burnley nil. Four goals for Niang in a single game, and this is exactly why we needed to get the guy back because he is just so overpowered. He is so unstoppable when he's on his game, and he certainly was today. So Arsenal five, Burnley nil. Niang getting all four goals. Sorry, uh, four of the five goals in this game, and his first four goals for the club as well. He and Lazari are going to work wonders together, and I'm just so pleased we got this guy back in the series and for Arsenal because I'm sure this guy can lead us to glory with this team. So as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.